Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at metallic bonding. Now metallic bonding is one of the three uh, main types of bond that you will have uh, in AS chemistry and all of chemistry. So um, the other two being ionic and covalent. Um, and so what we're going to look at is um, basically what the metallic bond is uh, and how it actually alters the the strengths of some of the metals in the periodic table. And we're going to look at patterns as well and trends. Um, now, two of the points that um, is going to kind of um, underpin this video are basically the words metal ions uh, and free and delocalized electrons. Now, throughout this video, if you keep thinking about them two points, um, and because these points are actually crucial when writing answers for um, in your exams, um, because these are key terminology. Um, and, and we're going to try and explain metallic bonding in terms of a uh, analogy um, because metallic bonding can be quite abstract and can be very difficult to to kind of get your head around why it actually works or what's actually happening. So hopefully the analogy that we'll come on to in a minute uh, will actually show you uh, will actually explain that quite well. So we've got metallic bonding is basically an attraction between delocalized electrons and positive ions. Now, all metals will form, or most metals, and the vast majority, will form a, a positive charge. And for the purposes of A-level, that's what you need to know. So, um, I've got um, lithium as an example. Now, lithium is in group 1. It's um, near the top, right at the top of group 1. Um, lithium normally forms plus 1 charge, just because it's in group 1. Um, now, when lithium bonds um, with other lithium atoms, then what happens is electrons are actually delocalized, so they're given up into what we call a cloud of electrons and lithium will then form obviously a positive charge it's an ion and these electrons here are symbolized in red so these ones here um, obviously are attracted to your lithium your positive charge in the middle and this attraction between positive metal ion and delocalized electrons so they're the key words that you need to say and um, allows this to actually bond in a, in a sufficient way so if we come down to sodium, now sodium is right below lithium, um, but sodium, um, if you can remember from, your, uh, from practicals, actually sodium is um, softer. It's a lot softer than lithium, and you can cut it with a knife. Uh, and this is the element that when you put it into water, it fizzes and, and moves around and produces hydrogen gas. Um, but sodium is actually not softer. Now, you can explain this in terms of... Um, electrons and the actual charge density as well which is uh, which is one of the key points that I've got over here so if you look both metals will produce positive ions one plus ions and both will only give up and can only give up one electron to form a delocalized electron cloud so both of them are actually um, are actually giving up the same amount but this one's softer because it can only give out the same amount of electrons but um, their electrons have to be spread over a larger area because sodium ion is bigger than a lithium ion. So I'll come on to this analogy. So if you imagine um, your electrons are a bit like jam and your positive ions are a bit like the toast. So we have both elements can only give up so many electrons. So that's like the same amount of jam. But the sodium ions are a lot bigger. Their charge density is actually lower. Um, because the, the, the atom or the ion is a lot bigger. So what that effectively means, it's like the same amount of jam, but you've got one small slice of toast, and you can cover that quite readily um, with a nice amount of jam on top of the toast. Um, but if the bread is a lot bigger, and you've got the same amount of jam, then what would happen is you would get a much thinner layer of jam over the toast, and it doesn't taste very, well, it doesn't taste as nice because there isn't as much jam on there. So it is all about this, the size of the, of the ions and that charge density. And if it helps to remember it in terms of jam uh, and how you can spread, uh, how you can delocalize your electrons over your ions, then that might help. But obviously you wouldn't talk about that in the exam. Um, so there, there's the main difference there. So if we start and then go down, so we've obviously gone down the group, down group one to sodium. Uh, and then if we start to move across, um, and we come to magnesium. Now, magnesium, compared to sodium, is um, stronger. Um, it's still not that hard. You can tear it, rip magnesium ribbon, you can tear in your hands. Um, but it's a lot harder than sodium. Now, magnesium uh, is in group 2, so it will form 2 plus ions normally. And it would give up 2 electrons and form the 2 electrons in the electron cloud. 
And you can see in this diagram that actually the electrons are now delocalized and we have a lot more of them that are now bonding or attracted to the positive metal ions. Now, because we've got a more electrons and we've got a smaller, uh, a higher, sorry, higher charge density, which means we've actually got uh, two plus charges instead of just a one plus, the attraction between the electron and metal ions is a lot, lot stronger. And that's why the um, strength of magnesium actually increases. So it's all about this charge density and the number of electrons. So magnesium's got more electrons and a higher charge density. Now, if we carry on further and we keep on going along the periodic table, um, we miss out, there's, there's a big gap where the transition metals are, and then we come into group three, which is aluminium. And again, aluminium is even stronger than magnesium. Um, and the reasons why, again, is because we've got a much higher charge density. So you can see here, there's the ions there. They're now three plus ions, uh, and they are a little bit smaller as well. Um, so that helps quite a lot. Uh, and then your electrons, you have a lot more electrons that are now delocalized. And because you've got more electrons delocalized with a higher charge density, which is there, it's a three plus instead of a two plus, the attraction is going to be even stronger. Uh, and that's why aluminium uh, is quite strong and is a much, much higher melting point. Um, the melting point aspect comes into this because you're going to try and um, make this a lot stronger. Um, so the melting point comes into this uh, because you've got a much stronger force of attraction to your positive ions and your electrons. Now, most metals, but not all, are uh, classed as ductile as well. So ductile means they can be drawn out into cables. Um, and the reason why is because um, these ions, or the electrons, sorry, uh, so these layers of different ions can slide quite readily. Um, and because they can slide quite readily, they can be drawn into a ductile formation but still keep that attraction between the electrons and the positive charges as well. So you've got to remember about the ductile properties of, um, uh, of metallic bonding. And um, there's another one as well, um, which is malleability or malleable. Now, if a metal is malleable, um, and some metals are, uh, well, the majority of metals are, it means that you can hammer them into shape. So we can take a hammer to them and they will break up into loads of different parts. So, and again, the reason why metals are generally malleable is because when you strike your metal, or when you hit it with a hammer or, or damage it or dint it, again, the structure can still rearrange itself um, where the electrons are still actually attracted to your positive ions, even though, there's a, a, um, even though the metal is actually deformed you still get that attraction there. Um, some compounds like um, uh, salt, for example, where you've got positive and negative ions, the moment you hit um, the, an ionic compound, um, the positive and negatives are normally alternating, so you have uh, alternating charges, so they'll attract quite um, strongly. But the moment you knock one of them layers on the top of an ionic compound, all of a sudden you've got lots of positives lined up and lots of negatives lined up, uh, and that means that actually the structure will break apart really easily. So you describe ionic compounds as brittle, um, whereas metallic compounds are generally, mainly malleable. Um, I hope that helps. That's it. Bye.